Introduction on Lean Six Sigma Lean Six Sigma is synergized managerial concept of Lean and Six Sigma that results in the elimination of the seven kinds of waste or MUDA. The objective of Lean Six Sigma quality is to reduce process output variations. Now have a look at the e-lecture describing Lean Six Sigma for your better understanding. Senior doctor is discussing with the junior doctors on the wastage of packed red blood cells in the hospital. You know, in our hospital, more than 4.6% of packed red blood cells had to be discarded before they could be delivered to the patients. Yes, sir. The majority of the time, this happened due to units leaving the blood bank for more than 30 minutes without being administered or going beyond maximum allowed temperatures. Oh, then we have to work on this issue. Let's apply Lean Six Sigma and see what will be the result. Okay, sir. Using Lean Six Sigma methodology, a team with backgrounds in anesthesiology, transfusion medicine and nursing identified major factors affecting blood product wastage, such as units being improperly packed and are not preserved properly. Good! Great improvement! In the first three months, this effort has not only saved the hospital's revenue, but has also ensured that more of the blood units are available. Oh, that's great, sir! Roles and Responsibilities of Lean Six Sigma Philosophy and Strategy Six Sigma philosophies are related to statistical process control, stochastic control relating to probability, and engineering process control. Let's understand the roles and responsibilities of Lean Six Sigma philosophy and strategy with the help of an example. So, the non-productive time in OT has caused deferment of revenue for the hospital and internal customer dissatisfaction. Oh, that said, we can use Lean Six Sigma to reduce the non-productive time. Okay, sir. So and we will look for three parameters which includes reduction of non-productive time between number one patient end time and induction being time number two induction end time and incision end time number three patient out time and ot readiness time okay let's see what will be the result five phase study using dmaic model was done voice of customer was done after interviewing surgeons anesthesia specialist and nursing staff. SIPOC gave an understanding towards the OT workflow. Value add, non-value add and operational value add activities were mapped with voluntarily working towards reduction or removal of non-value added activities. The result of Six Sigma project in OT was really progressive and non-productive time has reduced. Lean Six Sigma tools have really helped us to complete the task. Yes sir, it has helped to take more cases. Patient discharge has become more systematic. Chaos regarding scheduling OT cases has reduced, thus reducing non-productive time in OT. Yes, that's true. Lean Six Sigma has helped the doctors to focus on improving the bottom line problems and increasing patient satisfaction. Toyota and Motorola Management System Toyota and Motorola Management System allows its adopters to produce twice as much in half the time at half the cost with half the problems and with a fraction of the inventory. Toyota Management System is a combination of three innovations just-in-time production, total quality management, and policy deployment. Motorola ensures that process metrics and structured methodology are applied to improvement opportunities that are directly linked to the organizational strategy. Let's watch the video lecture that explains the Toyota Management System in detail. Lean Manufacturing and the Toyota Production System The use of the term lean in a business or manufacturing environment describes a philosophy that incorporates a collection of tools and techniques into the business processes to optimize time, human resources, 
assets and productivity while improving the quality level of products and services to their customers. Becoming lean is a commitment to a process and a tremendous learning experience should you attempt to implement lean principles and practices into your organization. The term lean in the manufacturing environment also refers to the Toyota production system established by the Toyota Corporation. Within the organization, four prominent gentlemen are credited with developing the system. Sakiji Toyoda, who founded the Toyoda Group in 1902. Kichiru Toyoda, son of Sakichi Toyoda, who headed the automobile manufacturing operation between 1936 and 1950. Eiji Toyoda, managing director between 1950 and 1981 and chairman between 1981 and 1994 and Taiji Ono, the father of the Kanban system. The practical expression of Toyota's people and customer-oriented philosophy is known as the Toyota Production System, TPS. This is not a rigid company-imposed procedure, but a set of principles that have been proven in day-to-day -day practice over many years. Many of these ideas have been adopted and imitated all over the world. TPS has three desired outcomes. First, to provide the customer with the highest quality vehicles at lowest possible cost in a timely manner with the shortest possible lead times. Second, to provide members with work satisfaction, job security and fair treatment. Third, it gives the company flexibility to respond to the market, achieve profit through cost reduction activities and long-term prosperity. TPS strives for the absolute elimination of waste, overburden and unevenness in all areas to allow members to work smoothly and efficiently. The foundations of TPS are built on standardization to ensure a safe method of operation and a consistent approach to quality. Toyota members seek to continually improve their standard processes and procedures in order to ensure maximum quality, improve efficiency and eliminate waste. This is known as Kaizen and is applied to every sphere of the company's activities. Integration of Kaizen, Lean and Six Sigma Kaizen is seductive and efficient. It can deliver results quickly and on a significant scale. In the context of a truly lean environment, Kaizen is a pervasive philosophy that affects the way all employees look at their work environment. Six Sigma utilizes information and statistical analysis to measure and improve a company's financial and operational performance, practices and systems by identifying and preventing defects. Doctors are worried about the rush seen in the OPD ward. Patients have to wait for many hours for their turn. As you all know that OPDs are considered as the window to hospital services and it makes the impression of the hospital. It also influences patients' sensitivity to the hospital. So, it is highly essential to ensure that OPD services provide an excellent experience for our patients. We should start working on this project as soon as possible. Sir, the time taken on activities before meeting physician should be reduced which includes Time taken to complete the blood test for new visit and revisit patients. Time taken to complete the blood test and ECG for new visit and revisit patients. Let's implement Lean and Six Sigma. Our objective will be the implementation of a measurement based strategy that focuses on process improvement and variation reduction through the application of Six Sigma Improvement Projects. By implementing value stream mapping and DMAIC, the problem was identified. At first, the causes were diagnosed. 
that is right from op registration to consulting the doctor by using the six sigma approach we have achieved significant reduction in waiting time for consultation six sigma is a highly disciplined process which helps to focus on developing and delivering near perfect products and services statistical theory of lean six sigma strategy it is a process capability that continuously improves the quality of the product and maximizes productivity sampling strategy sampling is a more efficient way to collect data using a sample to draw conclusions is known as statistical inference making inferences is a fundamental aspect of statistical thinking data collection plan normality study before conducting a data analysis using the normal distribution it is essential to make sure that the characteristic being studied is in fact normally distributed data collection plan normality study most organizations who work with continual improvement projects will have a standard form they use to capture this information during their planning process and to manage the data collection during the project A data collection plan form can be an effective planning and information sharing tool. The first key to success in setting up data collection plans is to understand what data is it you are seeking. This data could be from the outputs of a work process, observations in a marketplace, customer complaints or returned products, or the results of service events. The key here is to know what type of data it is whether it is attribute data or variable data the type of information and data you are looking for will greatly influence the rest of the data collection plan once we have defined what data we want to collect our next step is to define how to collect the data this will be greatly influenced by the type of data or information you want to collect if you are working with attribute data you will most likely be able to capture this information visually a key concern with visual checks is accurately assessing the item you are studying one tool to consider supporting visual inspection methods is to provide visual aids or standards for people to use to help them make more accurate assessments of what they are checking if you are working with variable data this will quite often require some type of measurement device to get the information needed identify the type of device needed to take the desired measurement a key consideration here will be the accuracy of the measurement device A critical mistake many make is to use a measurement device that is low cost or easy to use but has a lot of variation referred to as error in it. This can greatly throw off the accuracy of the measurements you are taking. A method to combat this issue is to perform a measurement system analysis MSA of your measurement device gauge or measurement method before you use it in your study how much data to collect example group size and how often sampling rate are two areas that generate a lot of questions again the type of information you are seeking will influence the amount of data you will need to collect a general rule of thumb used is to collect a minimum of 25 samples if you are using variable measures and five times this amount 125 samples if you are using attribute measures there are software programs available that can help you determine how many samples you need to collect taking into account the amount of variation you expect to see and the amount of change in your measurement are concerned about one of those programs is minitab two other considerations when determining how many samples to collect be how often will samples are available to take measurements and how expensive or difficult will it be to get the measurement in some cases the product will need to be consumed or destroyed to get the data you need example destructive testing